Welcome back, guys. So today we will learn how to host our Discord bot on a VPS and how to host the Discord bot dashboard on a VPS. We will also learn how to connect a domain and fully host our bot. So let's start. But before moving forward, if you want premium Discord bots or the complete source code of any of my videos, you can join my Patreon. The link is in the description. So let's start. Um, I already have a VPS and it is already set up. You can get a VPS from anywhere. There are many websites like Hetzner, hosting your GoDaddy, and I know there are many more, so you can get one from there and set it up. Then you will get an IP like this. So I hope you have already set it up and you have an IP like this. So now let's move forward. Now we open our command prompt and we need to log into our VPS. To log in, we type SSS at root it, and then enter your IP, then press enter after that. It will ask for the password, which you have set with your VPS provider. So enter that here and you will be logged in and you can see it is showing here. Now we need to update and upgrade our system. So first we will run the command sudo apt update. And after that we will run sudo apt upgrade once this is successfully completed. Now we need to install Node.js. But before that, let me show you, this is the project that we will host. It is a Node.js and Express project. And in this single project, both the dashboard and bot code are included. And you can see I have already uploaded it on GitHub. So you also need to upload your project to GitHub by creating a new repository. All right. Now, uh, you, we go back to our command prompt and we need to install Node.js. So for that, we will paste this command and don't worry, all these commands will be available in the description link. And once this is successfully done, we will install it by running sudo apt get install uh, why Node.js. Uh, and now you can see it is successfully installed. So if you also don't face any issues till here, that means we're good. And now we move forward. So now we need to install git. And to, to install git, we will run sudo apt install del y git. And as soon as this is installed, now we need to set up MongoDB. And to set up MongoDB, we also need to run some commands. And yes, you only need to install this if your project uses a MongoDB database. My project uses MongoDB, so I will install it. If, so to install MongoDB, first I will run sudo apt get install gnupg curl. And after that, I will paste this command. And again, all these commands will be available in the link given in the description. After that, we will create the MongoDB list file. And for that, we will run this command. And after that, now we need to update the packages once again and install MongoDB. So to update the package, we will run sudo apt get update. And then to install MongoDB, we will run sudo apt get install y mongodb org. And as soon as this is successfully done, now we need to start and enable the MongoDB service. And for that, we will run some commands. Now we will enable and start the MongoDB service. And for that, we will run some commands. First, sudo systemctl daemon reload, then sudo systemctl start mongod, and then sudo systemctl enable mongod. After that, we will verify whether MongoDB has started or not. To verify, we will run sudo systemctl status mongod. So very nice. Here you can see it is showing running, which means we're good. And now we move forward. And now we need to upload our code to the VPS. And for that, we have to follow a few steps. First, we will create a folder. To create a folder, we will run mkdir slash var slash www, which will create our folder. Now to go inside this folder, we will use cd slash vr slash www. Now we are inside this folder. If I run ls, you can see that this folder is currently empty. Next, we need to upload our project. To do this, we will use git. If you go to your repository and click on code, you will see your URL there. Copy this URL, then come to your command prompt and type git clone followed by that URL. After that, it will ask for a password, but we won't do it this way because it won't work like this. So we have another method for this. First, open notepad and paste the URL there. Uh, all right. So here I have pasted a URL that we can call a template. Now we need to modify this URL. First, I need to enter my GitHub username. So I will go to my GitHub and here is my username. I will copy it and paste it into the URL. Next, we need our personal access token. To get that, we will go to GitHub, click on our profile, go to settings, scroll down and find developer settings. Click on it, then go to personal access tokens and select tokens, classic. 
Now, click on Generate New Token, then select Generate New Token. Classic. You will need to confirm your sign-in. So I will quickly do that. Now here you can enter a name for the token, set an expiration date, and then select all permissions. Once done, click Create. Now you will see your token, copy it, and go back to Notepad. In the URL, replace token with your actual token. After that, the remaining part of the URL is your repository link. Enter the repository you want to clone. Now copy this modified URL. Go back to the command prompt, and since we are still inside the folder we created earlier, paste the command. You can see that the repository has been cloned successfully. If I run ls, you can see our project is now inside the folder. Um, all right, so after this, let's check by running ls. You can see that our project is now here. Now we need to go inside this folder, so we'll type cd project name. Now we are inside our project folder, and if I run ls, you can see all our files and folders. After this, the first thing we need to do is run npm install to install the dependencies. Then we need to create and configure the .env file. For that, we'll type nano nv. This command will create and open the file. Now, you need to enter your bot token, Idaho, and other necessary details. I will provide all the required details here. After that, press Ctrl plus X, then press Y, and hit enter to save the file. Now, once this is done, we need to install a package that will allow us to run our bot. We'll install PM2 by running npm install gpm2. Once this package is installed, we can start the bot using PM2 start, followed by the file we want to start, which in my case is inside the src folder as index.js. So I'll run pm2 start src slash index.jm name music bot. Now the bot has successfully started. Very nice. Next, we will run two more commands. First, pm2 startup, and then pm2 save. Now, if I go to Discord and show you, you can see that our bot is online. If you just wanted to host your Discord bot, you're done. And you don't need to follow further. But if you also want to host the dashboard, then continue following the next steps. All right, so now we will host our dashboard. And for that first, we will enable the firewall for the backend port. So first, we will check if it is enabled or not. So for that, we will run sudo ufw status. So you can see it is inactive. So to enable it, we will run sudo ufw enable, and then sudo ufw allow open sesh, and then sudo ufw allow in port. So here you have to give the port on which your project is running. Mine is on port 3001. So I will give 3001 here. And now if we run sudo ufw status, so you can see it is enabled. So now, if I enter my IP with the port, I allowed you will see 3000 here because I mistakenly allowed 3001. So I allowed 3000 again. And after that, if you have set your index.html as the slash page, then if you just enter this much, your main page will start showing. So you can see it is now displaying here. So right now our VPS server is running on the IP but we wanna run it on a domain. So we will follow the steps for that. First, we need to install Nginx. And to install Nginx, we will run sudo ap install y Nginx. And once it is installed, we need to allow Nginx in the firewall. So we will run sudo ufw allow Nginx full. And now if I run sudo ufw status, you can see that Nginx is allowed. And if I go to the browser and enter my VPS IP here and press enter, you can see it says, welcome to Nginx which means our Nginx has been successfully installed. So now to connect the domain, we need to run some commands, but first we need to set up our domain. So log into your domain provider account. I'll quickly log in here, then click on my account and go to my domain. Once here, we need to find name servers or DNS. If you purchased your domain from platforms like Hostinger or GoDaddy, the interface will be clean and easy to use but we still need to find name servers in DNS because every domain provider offers them when you buy a domain. If I check here, I don't see it directly, but if I look on the side, I see DNS management, so I'll click on Manage DNS. Here, you'll see different records like A records, MX records, C name records, etc. but we need to add an A record. If you have multiple websites like an admin panel, etc., you can add them here, but I only have a single dashboard, so I'll click Add A Record. In the host name, I'll enter at, and in the destination, I'll enter my VPS server's IP. 
Then I'll click Add Record, and that's it. Now, the remaining setup will be done through the command prompt. All right, so now we are back in our command prompt, and we need to connect our domain to the website and make it fully functional. For this, we need to run some prompts. So first, we will run this command and replace the domain with our actual domain name. After entering the command, a file will open where we need to provide some configurations. I have already created them, so I will paste them here and then replace the domain with my own domain name. For the location, I've already defined the required paths, but you need to edit them as per your project. I will also provide a link in the description from where you can copy and paste the configurations and edit them according to your project. After that, press Ctrl plus X, then Y, and hit Enter. Next, we need to enable symbolic links for the site. To do this, we will paste this command and replace your domain one.com with our actual domain name. Now, we will run a command to check for any syntax errors in the Nginx configuration by running nginx t. Finally, we will restart Nginx by running systemctl restart Nginx. Okay, so after doing all this, if I go to my browser, you can see that the IP and port are displayed here. But if I enter my domain name, you can see that it is working. However, you might notice that it says not secure, which means that the site is not yet secure and SSL is not activated. Eh. To install SSL, we need to go back to our command prompt and run a few commands. First, we will install certbot. Then we will run a command to obtain an SSL certificate for our domain. If you have multiple domains, you can add them by using space D, followed by the domain name. Finally, we will run a command to test the SSL renewal process. And that's it. Now, if I go back to my website and refresh the page, you can see that it is secure. So yeah, I hope you liked today's video and found it helpful. Still, if you have any issues, I have explained everything in detail and provided all the commands in the description. So you can check them there uh, and uh, host your website. So yeah, if you, you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.